All right, y'all. Let's get started with our first video of the year. Uh, this is going to be Unit Zero Day One. Unit Zero is all review. It's giving you context. We're going to talk about some today. We're going to talk about some early world religions and early trade routes during this time. All right. Let's start with our key terms. The key terms for today are Neolithic Revolution, historiography, pastoralism, city state, anthropomorphic polytheism animism, Silk Road, the Trans-Saharan trade route, the Mediterranean Sea, the Indian Ocean, and Lantine sales. Dow ships, syncretism, and tribute. Key terms are things that will be on the warm-up quizzes, uh, which are going to be the quizzes that cover the videos. There are historical terms you should know. They're going to things you're going to use in your essays and conversations in class. They're con concrete details and other illustrative examples. We're going to go over three big things today. Some of the early characteristics of the first civilization, early polytheistic beliefs, and early trade routes. The first time I want you to know today is historiography. It's the study of being a historian. This is where you look at documents, events, and interpret them. If you read two primary sources about Joseph Stalin, Right, and historians are able to come up with a story, an idea that the, what those documents really mean, which one's true. This is what we'll primarily be doing in class. Right, you'll interpret, analyze, and come to your own conclusions and provable conclusions over things we cover in class. It's more than just knowing stuff about stuff. Right here's a document you'll be getting in class. It shows all the regions. You need to know the names of these regions. You need to know where they are. You need to know which civilizations are located in which regions. We'll be doing a little geography quizzes throughout the year. right? On the exams, they'll ask you to talk about a civilization, say, for example, in the Middle East. You need to know where the Middle East is. What are the aspects of it? And who is located there? right? So you'll get this in class. We just need, I'm just going to touch on it here. Early history. So let's start off with some early history. The earliest people were hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers were people who would follow and hunt animals, and then they would use those animals for their everyday needs. Clothing, shelter, more tools, right? And of course, we have the gathering part of it, where they would gather berries, right? Seeds, undomesticated fruits, nuts, right? These gatherers were primarily women, while hunters were primarily male. Right? During this Paleolithic time, people learned, began to learn how to farm in what is known as the Neolithic Revolution. Right? During this time, right, people are trying to really figure it out. Right? They're trying to learn how to farm, they're trying to do things. This is where women and men start to kind of lose equality. They have semi-equality at times. Right? Women could be chiefs, they were valued as being gatherers, but that all changed with the Neolithic Revolution. People are going to start finding grain products that they're able to plant. Eventually, they're, they're able to domesticate those agricultural products. They're going to farm them in one area. Because they're farming in them in one area, they're going to create permanent settlements around those areas. And this is going to lead to the first towns, which are going to lead to the first civilizations and eventually the first city-states. Right? They're going to need to keep track of all the farms in the area, so they're going to create writing systems. They're going to protect their farmlands from people attacking it, so they're going to create armies. They're going to create laws. They're going to create religious systems so they can pray to the god of the sun to make sure that they are good sunshine for farm products. Right? Those gods represent nature. That's going to be anthropomorphic polytheism, which we'll talk more about in a little while. Right? These same people are going to domesticate animals. Uh, some people are not going to be what is known as domesticated, right? And those are going to be known as nomads. These are people who constantly move around from one location to another. Before I move on, domesticating animals is known as pastoralism. That's the domestication of animals and livestock, right? Nomads, back to nomads. Nomads will often conquer civilization. They'll often be around trade routes, right? They're also going to be heavily to spread new ideas, technology, economic goods, sometimes diseases, right? For most of uh, nomads are agents of change. 
The earliest civilizations at the very beginning of the histories were located by rivers. Right? These were known as river valley civilizations. The earliest ones are going to be Egypt at the Nile River Valley Civilization, China with the Yangtze or the Yellow River Valley Civilization, uh, India with the Ganges River Valley Civilization, and Mesopotamia, which is in modern day Iraq, with the Tigris and Euphrates River Valley Civilizations. Right? These early civilizations were city states. It'd be like, say, if Arlington was its own country, right? It's a city that has a government and controls the surrounding areas, right? The more term would be better was regionalized empire. All right, let's talk about some early beliefs. Beliefs can be seen all the way back in the Paleolithic era. Most tribal beliefs were animistic. Animism believes in localized spirits, right? That would people pray to. So there might be a spirit for the river. That spirit watches over that river, and you pray to that individual river spirit, right, for good f harvest or good rains or good food, right? They're not as organized as anthropomorphic polytheism, right? It's very, very localized. If you want to think of what animism looks like, think of, right, movies such as mm, Pocahontas, right? Those Disney movies show animism in a very rudimentary way another example would be like brother bear right the very first organized like truly like wide-scale organized religions are going to be anthropomorphic polytheism right this is going to be belief in multiple gods those those gods will have characteristics of animals nature and even sometimes humans for example zeus the god of versailles uh poseidon the god of the ocean Right, kind of very much Greek and Roman gods are going to be the kind of the stereotypical anthropomorphic polytheism. All right, let's talk about some trade routes you need to know. The first one is going to be the Silk Road. It's located in your Asia, which is Europe and Asia. Uh, in the Silk Road, uh, it's going to create diasporic, diasporatic communities, right? Diaspora communities are when one ethnic groups move to a different area. They form their own little communities within a town or city. An example of this would say be Chinatown in San Francisco, Little Italy in New York. Right? Nomads will protect these trade routes for the longest time. Uh, and they'll also attack the trade routes. Right? Such as the, the Zonggu and the Mongols will both fight the Chinese. And then they will offer protection for the Silk Road at the same time, right? So it's back and forth. Some of the major trade goods offered on the Silk Road, of course, are going to be silk, right? And it's going to be porcelain. The Silk Road is a huge trade route located in Asia, right? Here, here's an here's an example of it. It's not just one um, route. It's a huge route located in Asia. Right, it's not just one person, not one person's going all the way from Japan to the Mediterranean Sea. You would have trade towns in between, and so you would go to that town, sell your goods, they would take it to the next part, sell those goods, and so on and so on and so forth. Right? It started in China and ended in Baghdad in the Middle East. The next one's gonna be the Mediterranean Sea. This is a major trade route that the Europeans will use. It is a ocean-based trade route. It'll trade luxury goods like wine and olive oil. A luxury good is a good people use for luxury. It's not necessarily a necessity, right? You can't just eat wine and you can't just eat olive oil by themselves. They're not a, ne a they're not necessary for survival. It's something that you know just makes your life better, right? Same thing with silk and porcelain. You can't eat silk. You can't eat porcelain, right? It's not a crop. It's not a grain. It's just something that's luxurious it's optional next one is going to be indian ocean this is going to be used to travel and navigate in the indian ocean basin in this area there's a lot of monsoons which are really bad uh like rain it's almost as bad as a hurricane right it's a lot of rain and this happens primarily in india and the indian ocean because of that the indian ocean you have to create maps to navigate these monsoons so their ships don't crash right they can, they can only go sailing in the Indian Ocean in certain seasons of the year. They create certain ships that have square sails called Dow ships. And they're able to navigate these monsoon patterns with square-shaped sails, which are known as latine sails. Some of the big goods they'll be trading in the Indian Ocean are textiles. Textiles are made of cotton, clothing, and spices. Right? It'll become a big deal 
throughout history. The Trans-Saharan trade route, the last big trade route is the Trans-Saharan, right? They'll use uh, camels. Camels have water in their humps and make it easier to navigate. Go through the desert pretty well, right? Even if they are kind of weird creatures, right? Uh, the Trans-Saharan trade route will be located in Northwest Africa. Islam will spread through the Trans-Saharan trade route, just like Buddhism will spread along the Silk Road. Some of the big goods they'll trade is going to be salt, gold, and slaves, right? And really, the Trans-Saharan trade route is going to be dominated mostly by the Muslims for most of history, which we'll talk about in Unit 1 and 2, right? This map shows some of the trade routes that you can see right here. You can see the Mediterranean Sea, the Trans-Saharan, Silk Road, and Indian Ocean. Another Silk Road map, or the one I showed you again. Uh, this shows some of the different religions that was spread. What's going to happen is when one religion spreads from one area to another, that religion will blend with the localized culture. Blending two different ideas or two different groups, two different religions, is called syncretism. Syncretism is one of the terms you really need to know. It's the blending of different peoples, different religions, and different ideas to form a new idea. Right? Intercultural exchange, trades, and tribute. What's going to happen is there's also nomads. Nomads will conquer civilizations, right? Nomad a group like the Mongols, which we'll talk about in the end of Unit 1. Uh, when they do, they're going to create taxes, and those taxes are called tributes. They make the, pe the peasants pay money. Some civilizations in Americas will do that too, like the Aztecs. An example of the Incan civilization in South America, the Incan people will, will build their entire empire, and their entire empire will pay tribute to their capital. They'll redistribute it to parts of the empire. In China, they'll make the nomads pay tribute to them. If you want to look at tribute today, think of it like a mafia. The mafia is going to pay people to pay protection money. If you don't pay the protection money to the mafia, what happens? You get wiped out. Eh, you don't got to worry about it no more. Right? Same things happens when you don't pay your tribute. Don't pay your tribute, you get wiped out. Pay or go away. That's what it is. Right? Art and architecture will also... Um, Spread along trade routes, right? And you'll see very similar styles of architecture and art as along the trade routes. So that's where we're going to stop for today. If you have any questions, please ask, right? I'm available. Uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys in class. All right, bye.